Flatirons of Boulder, Colorado have always been a symbol of the town. Their breathtaking size and beauty sheds light on the creative and artistic culture that thrives in Boulder. But how do these incredible rock formations form? Why do they appear how they do today? We can answer both these questions by looking at the geologic history of the area and inspecting the rocks themselves. The Flatirons are part of a much bigger, widespread rock formation, the Fountain Formation, which lies on the eastern edge of the Front Range and the western edge of the Denver Basin. Other notable landmarks where you can also see similar deposits in the Fountain Formation are Red Rocks Amphitheater in Morrison, Colorado, and the Red Rocks of Boulder, Colorado. If we go and look at the Flatirons themselves, we can classify them and figure out what rock type they are and what that tells us about the area they deposited in. Here we are, just about at the top of the second flat iron, 7,000 feet above sea level. Here, I'm gonna help us classify the rocks that make this up. First off, we can tell it's a sedimentary rock, because here we have lots of other size rocks that have been pushed and cemented into one. It'd be further classified as a conglomerate sandstone. We know it's a sandstone due to the smallest grain sizes, and it'd be called conglomerate due to these rounded, bigger rocks that are in it. What the rounded conglomerate talk rocks tell us is they tell us that this was once part of an alluvial riverbed. The rocks came falling from an eroding mountain range. As they came down the river, they were rounded and then were deposited here into the fountain formation. Based on the age of the rocks this deposit lays above and the ones that it lays atop, it can be determined that the fountain formation was deposited during the Pennsylvanian period around 290 to 340 million years ago. This makes sense if we look at the geologic history at that time. The ancestral Rockies were slowly eroding and were up against an ocean which spanned over Denver and to the east. Looking at Steno's principles, it is known that all sedimentary rocks were deposited horizontally. So how did the flat irons reach the orientation that they stand at today? Well, after deposition, they sat in the crust horizontally until the Laramide orogeny, which was a mountain building episode that started 70 to 80 million years ago and ended some 35 to 55 million years ago. This would have lifted the fountain formation up, which gives reasons to why the flat irons stand at the 50-60 degree slope that they do today. It is believed that at first, the Laramide Rockies weren't very rocky at all, rather a very high ele elevation rolling hills and prairies. Then came the glacial epoch, which lasted around 8,000 to 2.5 million years ago. Over this time, glacials formed and melted dozens of times over through multiple alternating ice ages and warm periods. This helped speed up the erosion in the land, showing us the much more rugged and steep rocky mountains we see today. But why do we only see the fountain formation show itself in certain areas, such as the flat irons? This is because of a local potassium-rich cement that is deposited only in the bowler area called Aldelaria, also known as moonstone if it's in gem quality. This helped hold the flat irons together while the rest of the fountain formation in neighboring regions was eroded away. Now you know the geologic history of the Flatirons. Thank you for watching.